things, the buds, you know, take cover somewhere. But when the sun comes out, you know, usually hear those sounds in the skies and you see some uh, things in the sky flying all over the place. It's such a beautiful sight to see. Unfortunately, because of infrastructure development, we barely now see any birds except the Karolis. <laughs> uh, that we see around Kampala and uh, the ones that uh, if it drops, it puts a dropping on your attire, the acidity may cause you to throw away the attire. Anyway, but at the end of the day, it is uh, part of bio biodiversity and we must appreciate it. So we must protect the biodiversity commitments and actions as well as uh, look at the International Conference for Women Badders. That is our business update here in Morning at NTV as we journey on Wednesday's edition. My name is Priscilla Regina. Now, Uganda is definitely one of the most species-rich countries in Africa due to the presence of several major biomes. It has also lost much of its natural habitat to agriculture. The country is estimated to have lost about 50% of its biodiversity with a value between 1975 to 1995 due to the hunting, loss of forest, loss of savanna, wetland habitat for agriculture. Now, to accelerate the understanding of this conversation, I'm joined by Judith Mirembe. She is the chairperson, Uganda Women Bad Watchers Club. Good morning to you, Mirembe. Good morning, our dearest viewers. Um, my name is Judith Mirembe, and I'm the pioneer chairperson of the Uganda Women Badders. I'm happy to be here. Let's talk about birds for a moment. How many species do we have of birds in um, Uganda? In Uganda, we have about uh, a thousand and eighty species of birds, and Uganda has at least fifty percent of Africa's bird species mm. and eleven percent of the global population. Okay, wow, over one thousand birds. I can barely count uh, <laughs> one or two. We, we usually count them looking at colors or what kind of uh, trees that they are habitating on. But nevertheless, you are wearing binoculars. What kind of binoculars are those? And how far can they see? Um, so this particular brand, it's one of the best uh, Swarovski the world has ever produced. It has a life guarantee and uh, it's one of my best tools um, that I have in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, they can see, um, so every binocular has a magnification. Uh, mine is uh, 8.5 by 42. And uh, so it can see at least um, 200 meters from uh, where I am. Um, yes, so they're different brands, but everybody has their favorite tool, and yeah. this is mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, my favorite tool is my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh, biodiversity in Uganda. What is it, and what are the present threats to our biodiversity? So biodiversity in simple terms, bio means life and uh, diversity is uh, like diversity, different forms of life. Mm -hmm. So biodiversity in Uganda is comprised of uh, forests, animals, birds, uh, all those are different forms of life, plants, even uh, small things like insects, beetles, ants, all that is biodiversity, life in its different forms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So when it comes to the threats, what are the threats that our biodiversity, all, all those forms of life you've mentioned, what are the threats to their existence? So the biggest loss of biodiversity is uh, man, uh, because biodiversity exist we're also part of the biodiversity but all the other forms existed before us mm -hmm. even from the creation story we were created on the last day and then god rested so everything else existed before us but uh, god gave us the power to make changes and some of these changes we've made um include habitat loss because as the population increases man needs where to stay and uh, all this has also been aggravated by the innovations that have come up with technology um, a long time ago people would till the land with just holes and pangas mm -hmm. but now someone will get a grader and will just clear all these plants and the animals that live in so the habitat loss habitat degradation uh, we've seen a lot of our wetlands they're being reclaimed for sun mining for industries um, 
and we're seeing some of the effects like floods, uh, uncertainty of rainfall and uh, climate change of course. Uh, so those are some of the losses that are happening. We also have a big problem of invasive species. So invasive species are species that come in a place and they were not originally there. The species tend to be aggressive and will kill the native species. Mm -hmm. So all this is also a cause to um, biodiversity loss. The causes are many and uh, this is just to mention but a few. Okay. All right. So let's talk about uh, the other things that are happening around mankind. Uh, for example, as a country, we are inking towards the oil and gas uh, production. And so there's a lot of development that is going into aiding that. You do have the mineral exploitation that is being encouraged, as well as the expansion of the power generation industries for us here in Uganda. And of course, from what you have said, those seem to be um, incurring on biodiversity. How is Uganda protecting the existing biodiversity in light of all this? Because they are also necessary for, for mankind uh, to be able to develop to in, you know, the global status. We need these things, but then again, we also have to protect. Yes. Uh, so basically, um, again, the human mind has evolved over time. And we tend to find solutions for some of the problems that we get. So with biodiversity loss, uh, looking at the face of oil, oil exploration and many of these other activities, um, so there's a hierarchy, uh, it's called a mitigation hierarchy. So mitigation is like reducing the effects. So the first one you try to avoid, if you can do without the oil, then you do. If you cannot avoid, then you go to reduction, you reduce the side effects. And then you go to mitigation, uh, that is also reducing again the side effects. If all that cannot be done, then you do an offset. An offset is um, if I'm going to destroy, uh, let's say, Mavira Forest, I am going to create another habitat, which is Mavira Forest, somewhere else to counter um, to create an alternative and also we have a number of regulations uh, that accrue to use of uh, this biodiversity um, there are a number of um, I'll give an example of the African grey parrot and the grey crown crane so the grey crown crane on the national list is uh, endangered mm -hmm. so in a few years it will disappear extinct. it will yeah. go extinct so um, there are a number of laws. If you're good um, hunting such an animal, you can be arrested and convicted. To get, everybody loves grey parrots. They want to have it as a pet mm -hmm. to sing for you every day. But to have that grey parrot in your home, you must get a, a license, license yeah. from the Uganda Wildlife Authority. So those are some of the rules. And some of these rules expand further to an international level. You hear of a convention, you hear of, um, like, uh, I'll give an example of uh, the Ramsar Convention. Mm -hmm. All these are put together to protect global biodiversity, and Uganda is a signatory to some of these conventions. And, of course, we have uh, here at within our home, Uganda, we have the Uganda Wildlife Li Life Act, which stipulates um, about the use of... Uh, the different rights in regards to animals, if you want to keep a wild, a wild animal, and it also puts across the authorities that are in charge of these animals. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Talk to us about the National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan 2015-2025. Where do we stand right now? It's two years to 2025 practically. And have we mi moved the milestone, the intended milestone of this uh, plan? Um, yes, we have uh, partially moved, and uh, yeah, we all these efforts, um, they are continuous efforts. Mm -hmm. We cannot achieve it in a day, we cannot achieve it in a year, and along the way when we realize some of these have not been uh, achieved, we review and then it's... Um, it's updated according to what is happening. So Uganda has made uh, long strides, especially to do with uh, biodiversity protection. Mm -hmm. We are signatory to a number of um, conventions and we attend all these meetings. Mitigations have been put in place. Um, 
organizations like uh, the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA is working very hard. EIS, environmental impact assessments, are done to reduce some of these effects on biodiversity. And all these are, these are things that are supposed to be done before a construction is made. And before all these, uh, before all these developments are approved, these assessments are done, and all this is to protect biodiversity and the effects that come with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Miriam, for enlightening us on that. Now, let's go to the Uganda Women's uh, Barters Club. What, what's the club about? What it's, what's the mandate of the club? So the Uganda Women Barters Club is uh, a club that was started in uh, May 2013, and basically we wanted to see the number of women in uh, nature guiding increase. Basically we're looking at bird watching as a niche and these are, this is a niche that has for long been dominated by men. If you move to a national park and you found let's say 50 guides, tourist guides, mm -hmm. you'll count about three that are women or sometimes you don't see any. So we wanted to see the number increasing and um, we started with bird watching because bird watching is one of those the hardest activities. It needs a lot of fa and patience and a lot of time and a lot of the time. Whole afternoon in the forest. Yes. Yeah. And it's quite expensive. So we started with a few women that were already established within the industry as general guides, and we wanted to have more women to inspire others to join. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it has been uh, positive. We have grown from around 10 members that we started with. Now we're around 80. Wow. And the club has uh, inspired um, Kenya, Rwanda, and South Sudan mm -hmm. to form similar clubs. And we're looking at having um, a global federation of female guides where we can have a network share ideas, uh, have exchange training programs, and then we develop together. Because largely, a woman will only do something if they see a fellow woman doing it. Mm -hmm. They say, yeah, I want to be like Judith, mm -hmm. I want to be like Harriet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because right now I want to be like Judith. I yeah. just need to buy myself some binoculars, and then I join the club and uh, spend a whole day in the forest stilled and waiting for a bird to fly by. You do have the International Conference for Women Birders uh, that's starting today. Talk to us about this conference, what's on the agenda, who's coming, from which countries are they coming? So the International Conference of Women Birders is an idea that was born out of the Uganda Women Birders. Actually, this year we celebrate 10 years, so this is one of our biggest achievements that we are proud of. Uh, it's going to have a number of women that have made it within the tourism industry. These are both local and international. We're going to have presentations from females that own companies, females that are well-established tourist guides, and from these talks they can inspire and encourage more ladies and girls to join. And of course, when we have more women participating within tourism, then uh, we have the industry growing. Mm -hmm. and. Many times women are the ones that inspire the children, they teach the children about conservation. So if we can have, um, you know there's a saying that when you educate a woman, a woman. You educated a nation. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what, what's, what else is on the agenda and what are, you, what are some of those things you hope this conference will mitigate, uh, not just for Uganda but region and Africa by and large? So largely, the conference is going to be a networking, there are a networking event. We have very many ladies that are from, we have a lady from Ecuador, uh, we have ladies from North America, we have ladies from the UK, we have uh, ladies from South Africa, Kenya, our neighbors, Rwanda, Tanzania, and this will be sharing experiences from the presentations, we shall have a uh, presentations from conservation, um, our own uh, Dr. Zixoka Gladys, mm -hmm. the lady that has been instrumental in the conservation of gorillas will be present, uh, Dr. Diana Nalwanga that has also been an instrument in conservation of birds will be present, and largely this event is going to market Uganda as a tourist destination, as a birding destination. So. 
we're having all these visitors and the publicity it's going to grow Uganda's tourism. Where is it being held and um, is a, a potential future border allowed to be part of this network? So the event is going to be held at uh, the Sheraton between 6th to 8th December and uh, also to add on we shall have farm trips, uh, familiarization trips mm -hmm. to different parts of the country to give people a chance to learn and um, get knowledge about birds. We shall have uh, birding clinics. The so birding clinic is, uh, I'll have my binoculars, other equipment like the camera, the telescope. Mm -hmm. I can show you how to do it. I can introduce you to the, yes, please. Yes, to mm -hmm. the, to the trade. And yeah, everybody's welcome to join. You don't have to be a birder. Just come and learn and know what we do as birders. Okay, does it come at a cost? No, um, so the conference is a free entrance, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we would like to. I would like, on behalf of the Uganda Women Badders, to thank the Private Sector Foundation and uh, the Mastercard Foundation for sponsoring this event. It's a fully sponsored event. Uh, please come, learn, and uh, yeah, you just have to transport yourself to the event. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. What else uh, will be post-event or the post-conference uh, when we look at encouraging more women because it's been 10 years of the club's existence? How do you intend to attract more women to actually enter into the bad watching space or even really the tourism sector? Um, so looking at uh, the 10 years that we've had, yeah, we've had challenges and we've managed to overcome some of those challenges. We have learned lessons and... Um, when you say challenges, what, what have been some of the challenges? Some of the challenges have been equipment. We don't have such equipment in Uganda. Oh yes, it, you have and to. And oftentimes we have to send friends that are coming from abroad to bring these. So we are looking at um, having more equipment, mobilization drives to have such equipment so that inclusive of the guidebook so that the women can borrow and use at ease. Mm -hmm. We're looking at having more trainings. If you have more trainings, then you have more people coming in. We're looking at having uh, country drives, go to different parts of the country because some of these activities tend to be centered around Kampala because it's where the majority of the people are okay. and the people we think can afford. So sometimes we tend to forget about the rural areas. But we have regional representatives that mm -hmm. are mobilizing uh, other women in the different regions. So we look at uh, creating more trainings, we look at creating more empowerment and mentoring sessions where we have women like me, women like Harriet that are already there mm -hmm. to mentor and encourage the other women to join. Okay. Well, Judith Mirembe, your closing remarks as the chairperson of the club. What's your closing remark? What's your call to action for women in tourism? I would like to welcome all the women and ask you to join us. It's not easy, but uh, we are making it and so you can. Um, I would like to thank our partners, the Uganda Women Badders, uh, the main organizer, the Uganda Safari Guides Association, the Uganda Tourism Board, the Uganda Wildlife Authority, and also the Ministry of Tourism that have been very instrumental in seeing this um, come to success. And above all, mm -hmm. I would like to thank Bad Uganda Safaris, which has been instrumental in developing women and giving us that status um, thank you very much okay. you're welcome to the conference um, all right thank you so much judith mirembe who's the chairperson with the uganda women borders club and of course the call to action there is that you too can also be a part of the association you too can be a part of promoting uganda uh, through tourism and through the smallest thing it's a bud Yes, but it can actually get someone from Ecuador to come to Uganda for the first time. That is how powerful tourism is to actually all bring us together. Well, that marks the end of this conversation. Don't go away because we still have more conversations.